Some of Appalachia's six unique regions have been stained by the hand of man. The ash heaps suffocating air was caused by strip mining on the top of Mount Blair by the Rockhound and exacerbated by Hornwright's air purification systems. The mire was transformed into the alien landscape that we see today by a Gek explosion in Vault 94. The story of the Toxic Valley's signature white ash dusting is a little bit more complicated. It involves negligent murder, sabotage, and a healthy dose of Fallout's notorious greedy corporations. So why is the Toxic Valley so toxic? What's with the white ash everywhere? And who is responsible? The United States' war with China was obviously heating up in the months leading up to the bombs, so much so that the government was sending out production mandates to companies that were important to the war effort. If we head to the Charleston Post Office, we can find a notice for one of these mandates given to all Grafton Steel employees, labeled Important Notice. To all employees from Stacy Tibbetts, HR manager. I'm pleased to announce that Grafton Steel has officially been named government preferred war contractor. Our efforts, your efforts, will defeat the commies. With this news comes some exciting changes. Effective immediately, all shifts will begin working a 672 schedule to make our production quota. Remember, with your 12 hour shift, you will get a half an hour lunch at your workstation and three 15 minute breaks. Under the Wartime Workers Act, you will be given time and a half pay for the 11th and 12th hour of each day. So there's going to be some extra money coming your way. Hooray. Sick time is no longer paid. A doctor's note is required for any absence. Support the war effort at Grafton Steel. Stacy Tibbetts, HR manager, Grafton Steel. Company confidential. This mandate declared that employees would work 12 hours a day, six days a week, with only a few of those extra hours getting overtime pay. If we enter Grafton's voting office, just east of the Grafton station, we can head upstairs and find out what the employees thought of the new hours and conditions at Grafton Steel. In the note, Darius Angler's Manifesto, Part 1. I hate Grafton Steel Mill. Too many of us that work there are getting hurt. They don't care about us. They only care about profits. That's why I quit. I tried to get my brother Billy to quit, but he needs the money. Grafton Steel doesn't deserve me. They don't appreciate me. I'm the best chemist this side of the Mississippi. They'll never be able to replace me. That will show those bastards. Darius took a stand against Grafton Steel's post-mandate working conditions by quitting. Unfortunately, his brother was not in the same position. The fact that Darius was Grafton Steel's chemist will be important later in the video. All right, just around the corner, we can find Darius Angler's Manifesto, part two. I killed my brother. Those bastards at the Grafton Steel Mill killed Billy. Mandatory overtime, they called it. I should have never been on those catwalks. Fall into a vat of molten steel, there's nothing left of you. I'll get them for this. I'll show those bastards. It sounds like Darius' fears have come true. His brother fell into a vat of molten steel. At the end of this tape, it sounds like Darius will seek revenge. Let's see what he has in mind. Heading over to Willard Corporate Housing, presumably where Darius was living, we can find two additional tapes. Here is Darius Angler's Manifesto, Part 3. I've uncovered a conspiracy between the government and Graft and Steel. Kickbacks, wink and nod inspections, bribes, you name it. There's no telling how big this is. So I, I've moved to a cabin in the woods where nobody can find me. Yesterday I had to shoot a woman. She claimed she was just hiking, but uh, I know she was an agent sent to spy on me. It sounds like Darius is definitely suffering from paranoia, probably caused by his isolation. 
This definitely sounds like a case of domestic terrorism in the making. Here is part four. Yeah, I booby trapped my cabin. They're attaching listening devices to the raccoons to spy on me. But I'm too smart for them. <laughs> they can't get past my traps. I saw a fox look funny at me today. If I see another one come around, that'll prove it. As his paranoia worsens, you have to wonder what Darius is cooking up in that cabin of his. Unfortunately, there aren't any clues that would lead to that cabin in the woods. In an adjacent mobile home, we can find part five. This time, it is a note. It's perfect. It will kill them all. I'm doing this for you, Billy. They killed you, and now I will kill them. All of them. If I add my secret formula to the... No, don't write that down, Darius. The rats could steal the journal and give it to the government. I can't have them ruining my plans. After it happens, they can listen to my holotapes and read my journals. Then they will know. Then they will be sorry. So it sounds like Darius is going to poison, presumably, Grafton Steel employees. Although he is withholding the details due to the undercover rats. To finally unravel his plans, we need to go to Grafton Steel. This is where we can find the final part of Darius Angler's manifesto. Here is part six. The air raid sirens, the ground shaking. It's Billy. He's telling me it's time. Everyone is thinking about the bombs. <laughs> they won't notice me. All I have to do is sneak into Grafton Steel use my secret formula. Their smokestacks will be spewing toxic dust all over the valley. <laughs> then they'll be sorry they hurt Billy. They'll be sorry and dead. <laughs> It sounds like his paranoia has transformed into schizophrenia when he mentions his recently deceased brother. So after quitting due to Grafton Steele's new position as a government preferred war contractor, Darius Angler was compelled by the neglectful death of his brother to use his experience as a chemist to create a compound that would poison Grafton Steele employees. His infiltration into Grafton Steel was aided by the chaos created by the bombs dropping. We can guess he added the compound into the blast furnace because of the warnings posted at all the doors leading to it. Due to the ongoing investigation about the attempted sabotage of the blast furnace, we are restricting access to approved personnel only. Supervisor Fortney will be in charge of the shift handoff of the keys and the doors shall remain locked under all hours. Management. Upon successful application of his secret compound, Grafton Steel's smokestacks began to spew tons of toxic white ash, which subsequently settled onto the Toxic Valley. We find super mutants occupying Grafton Steel. This makes me think the compound created by Darius had something to do with FEV. Grafton Steel continued to function after the bombs. In the Rolling Mill building, we can find a holotape about the aftermath of the attack. I don't know what all they put in the furnace, but it's gone to up for good. Wouldn't have been so bad if y'all just shut the damn thing down for a few weeks and cleaned out the blast. At this point, whatever it is, at this point it's fused with every damn part from the furnace to the smelter in the mills. Look, Mason, I don't need to hear it. Can you keep it running or not? I think I'd be easy. Whatever's going on chemically, it's pretty toxic and corrosive at that. You're gonna have to keep making near constant repairs. I can mark the areas, but it's not gonna stop the ash. Foreman doesn't give a damn about the ash. The workers brought it on themselves, now they get to live with it. Besides, the bots don't care. All the more reason to continue the workforce changeover. So, that's it then. Just... Keep replacing bots and machinery and let the plant destroy the valley and break up the strikers? If you got a problem with that, we can cancel payment. It, it's just... Shit. Just... Get me in the van, okay? And 
Get me out of here before anyone sees me. Yeah. Pleasure doing business with you. We'll recommend you to our friends. Don't. Don't ever contact me again after this. And erase my name off that hollow tape. I went over the needed repairs. That's enough. Fine. Darius Angler may have initiated the release of the White Ash, but it sounds like Grafton Steel's administration decided to continue the pollution by refusing to properly fix the blast furnace. So to me, it sounds like the pollution in the Toxic Valley was more of a symptom of Grafton Steel's harsh conditions, which created the right conditions for a toxic sabotage to occur. All right, guys, that's all I have on Darius Angler and the Toxic Valley. My next videos should be on the Mire and on the Ash Heap, respectively. So make sure to stay tuned for those videos. I hope everybody enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe. It really does help out the channel. Also consider following me on Twitter. It's the best place for me to keep in contact with you. But anyway, this has been Wijin TV. Thanks for watching, guys.